Adventists. This is a Protestant denomination. So they would believe in one God. They would call themselves uh, Trinitarian. They believe in the Bible as the word of God. The difference is they practice a Sabbath, so they use Saturday as their day for worship. Um, and they believe in spiritual as well as physical rest on Saturday. Many of them will want to dress modestly. They might wear no jewelry, and they may have a fairly conservative lifestyle. They very much emphasize diet and health. Many are vegetarians for they believe it's healthier. Many will avoid alcohol or tobacco. Again, strong emphasis on health. They're very willing to use medications, but they don't want to use medications when they're not necessary. So if it's, you know, a virus and just sleeping and having enough fluids, well, it's the best treatment, that's what they're going to want to do. They're not going to expect medicine unless there's no other alternative. So some nursing considerations is find out about their diet, are there dietary restrictions. Um, because they do practice at Sabbath on Saturday, if we can avoid things on Saturday, like physical therapy or surgery, they're going to prefer that. If there isn't, they, again, uh, they value life more than anything else, and so if you have to have an emergency surgery on a Saturday, you would do that. You would not not do it. They believe very strongly in prevention and health promotion. Some are going to prefer prayer over medication, but when it when they see that um, there is a health problem that's not improving, they will take medicine. They're not going to be resistant to it, but they may really try um, healthy living, healthy diet, exercise, prayer, just really to try and get their body healthy first. And if that doesn't work, then they'll go to medicine. And part of that is because they do have a more holistic view of, of a person. that. Um, using that same blood pressure example, they'll take the blood pressure medicine, but they may also see a therapist because uh, part of the blood pressure may be stressed from some relationships, and they'll um, take a vacation because part of it may be stressed from not getting enough rest, and they'll use prayer because part of it may be spiritual um, issues. So they have a holistic view. Christian Science. To be honest, I'm not sure why this one's on our syllabus. I'm not sure I've ever run into Christian Science in the hospital. Um, but the basic beliefs of Christian Science is that everything is spiritual. And the material world is really just an illusion. So the symptoms and the illness you have are not real. They feel real because you're believing in them, but if you can, through prayer, reach a point where you're so in tune to the spiritual reality, those artificial things of the material world, including your illness and symptoms, will fall away. And this comes from an understanding that in the Bible, Jesus healed people. And the, they would say, Jesus still does heal people. The founder of Christian Science was a woman, Mary Baker Eddy, who had a real illness. She had a fall and had a back injury, and she found through um, prayer, she was able to get to a spiritual point that she was healed. And she said, this was uh, somewhere in the, I think it's in the 1850s, but anyway, quite a while ago. She said, Jesus healed her. Jesus is willing to heal anyone if you can get to the right place through prayer. So nursing considerations, um, they are going to want prayer over drugs or surgery. If the patient gets to the point that they say, I'm not able to spiritually, through prayer, get to the point I need to, the, um, where the spiritual reality is more real to me than this material world, then they will turn um, to whatever it may be, surgery or, or medication or whatever we're recommending. So they're not going to um, be non-compliant when they uh, turn to using Western medicine, but it may be later than we would have um, liked. Their publication is called the Christian Science Monitor. 
Um, it looks very much like a newspaper or magazine. They're very politically active, and in their uh, publication you'll see that there's a lot of political um, and kind of um, issues of the world uh, that they really want people to be aware of and uh, informed about. Your Mormon religion, uh, they call themselves Latter-day Saints. Their basic beliefs, they use the Bible, but they also have the Book of Mormon. Um, they believe in prophecy, that God speaks to the world through uh, his prophet, and they always have a prophet in their church, who is the person who um, tells them uh, God's prophecies. They believe strongly in baptism, but baptism is for older children and adults. An infant, they do a sealing ceremony that seals that child into their family. So if you're an OB and the, a baby's born that maybe has some health problems, you might want to ask them if they want to bring um, their you know, people in and do a sealing ceremony, and they probably will want to do that. They believe in a pre-earth existence. This is not the same as reincarnation, though. They believe that all souls exist um, in heaven prior to being born, and you know, then they those souls are born here on earth. Um, nursing considerations. They most of them will not take alcohol or caffeine and we have a lot of caffeinated beverages and drinks so you're going to want to uh, be sure you ask them about that. They recommend large families and this is part of that pre-earth existence. There are souls waiting to be born. It's not a requirement though but just realize you are likely to see large families but you may not and they have a very tight-knit um, community as well so you'll probably have um, a number of, of their friends and support people from their church coming. They value modesty. Many of them will wear special undergarments and these are kept on partly to ensure modesty. As long as those garments are covered, they feel that they're properly clothed. Part of it is also to remind them of God's presence around them and his protection around them. Now I asked two different people I know who are Mormon if they came into the emergency room what would they want done with the garments. Um, you know, if we had to cut them off. One said, treat them special, those are special to me, don't throw them away, even if they're, you know, have been damaged and you had to cut them off, put them in a bag, let me take them home. And the other one said, if, you know, they're full of blood and they've been cut off, just throw them away. So it's going to vary from person to person, so I would suggest treat them with respect until you know that, you know, how this specific person is going to want that handled. Punjabi, um, which is actually a language, and Sikh is the religion that uh, is from that, um, the Punjab area where they speak Punjabi. So the basic beliefs of the Sikh um, religion, this is really a religion and a culture. One time I asked a student if he was doing his presentation on a religion or a culture, and he said, well, it's both. And it, it really is. It's very intertwined. They come from the Punjab region of India and Pakistan. It's kind of on the border there between the two. Their language is Punjabi. Their religion is Sikhism. They uh, have ten Sikh gurus. Uh, guru Nanak Dev was their first guru. And I may not be saying these quite right, um, their scriptures are the writings they have from those gur gurus and uh, Guru Granth Sahib is the one who did the majority of their writings. They believe that there are five evils, ego, anger, greed, attachment, and lust, and those should be avoided. And there are five positives, truth, compassion, contentment, humility, and love. And those should be um, sought after, or, or people should try and live those out in their lives. They believe in salvation, um, but they would define salvation as union with God, not a location. So it's not the same idea as the Christian heaven. Um, they would say worldly attachment prevents salvation. It, if somebody's very attached to the 
this world and the things of this world and that prevention of salvation causes them to be reincarnated so again reincarnation is not a good thing it's something that you try and get out of they believe strongly in balance in their lives to balance their work and worship that they should have all these in their lives work and worship charity and then defending the rights of all what um, you may run into in the hospital is that Sikhs um, practice the five K's and I'm not going to try and pronounce these but there are five different things um, that many of them will do and again like all these other religions some people are very strict adherents and some don't so we need to check with our patient but one is to, to not cut their hair and you'll see men who have never cut their hair usually have it up in a turban um, both the men and the women though may have never cut their hair so we should be very cautious if we need to cut it for surgery or something we need to just handle that delicately and talk to the patient first um, they're probably you know will say yes if they need surgery but if there's a way to do it without cutting the hair or, or minimizing the hair loss I think they would appreciate that or just being understanding and sensitive in asking them rather than doing it they also have a little wooden comb that they keep in their hair or in their turban. They have um, a special pair of white uh, shorts that they keep, that they wear underneath their clothing. And they have an iron bracelet that they wear on their wrist at all times. And then they have this sword that they keep kind of tucked in their, their uh, side, in their pants. It's a, a curved sword. Um, now, I mean, some of those are going to be a problem in the hospital. The sword is going to be a problem with security. The iron bracelet, if they go for an MRI or something, we can't have the jewelry on. And they will understand that as long as we're sensitive in how we ask them to do that. Um, so don't just, you know, pull stuff off and throw it away. Or if somebody comes into the emergency room, you know, keep it for them and um, just realize these are things that are very special and meaningful to them. They use meditation. That's how they reflect on God and, and feel close to God. And they also will do prayers in the morning after bathing. So you may again have a patient asking for um, water and that's, you know, don't tell them we'll bathe you later. And then they also pray in the evening. And these are some websites. We used these earlier in looking up some of the alternative uh, medications and, and practices and they both have things that list or areas in these websites that list medical practices that we have or medications that we use that might interact with um, herbal and other remedies.